the impact of the pandemic has disrupted all global systems, including governance, economy, lawmaking, food production, transportation, education, and health systems, to mention but a few. The most advanced systems in the world have been tested to their limits. This is therefore the right time for the legislature to reconsider and reposition itself on the delivery of the expected outcomes of the contract with Nigeria because the next three years will be very critical to our nation. The right honorable speaker and leadership. Let me pause a bit and give you the global, the African, and the Nigerian statistics as of this morning so that we are mindful of what we are dealing with. The global statistics this morning, the Excellency, stands at about 16 million people in Pakistan. Number of deaths is about 650,000. In Africa, the rate of infection is 814,000 plus, with fatalities of 17,000 plus. In Nigeria, the number is 39,000, almost 40,000 this morning, and the number of fatalities stand at 845,000. Yesterday, I mean, 840, uh, uh, 40, uh, 45, not thousand. Sorry. <laughs> because the figures are in thousands, so when I get to Nigeria, I couldn't stop because it's thousands. Thousand. Yesterday, Friday, recorded the highest number of infections in one day since COVID 19 began to ravage the world. Mr. Speaker, this is in spite of all the investment globally. The world has committed trillions of dollars to fighting this pandemic. But yesterday, Friday, we had the highest recorded number of infections in one day. The United States of America took about 78,000 of those people. In spite of the aged democracy, in spite of their strong economy, in spite of their institutional in place for three centuries, they are now on their knees trying to sort out the negative effect of COVID-19. I am making these figures available to you. You might have read it, you might have seen it. So that when you go into the course of your deliberations this afternoon, you will be mindful of your position in history, that a lot would have to be done to re-engineer, to reconstruct our governance system, our health infrastructure, and that can only happen when the legislature is up to the task of making adequate regulations and rules and laws that would help us situate every aspect of our national being in the context of COVID, of post-COVID-19. At our present circumstances and proposed solutions that sought to go beyond surface fixes to address the core of our most pressing national problems and provide the right answers to the unresolved questions of nationhood. However, in all our planning and imagining, we did not know that the world would ch soon change drastically in ways we could not then conceive of and with consequences beyond our wildest imagination. Before now, the extent of our difficulties was well known to us. We have population growth 
that far outpaces the rate of economic growth. Insecurity has made vast swaths of our country uninhabitable for citizens and unattractive to investment. We are at war, fighting insurgents in the Northeast who want to remake our world in the image of a medieval theocracy. Our education system is producing graduates who cannot compete in the 21st century knowledge economy. At the same time, economic and social inequity exacerbates our age-old conflicts, making cooperation and progress difficult and often impossible. As a consequence of the new realities imposed on us by the COVID-19 pandemic, the question then is, how do you achieve your ambitions in a world where the signposts of certainty have moved so far that we can barely even see them or recognize where they used to be? This is the reality from which the Nigerian people are looking to us for lasting solutions. Are we able to rise to the challenges of our times? I believe that we are. This updated legislative agenda and the implementation plan, which we have tagged our contract with Nigerians, sets out the new priorities of this ninth House of Representatives and commits us to a plan of action over the next year and for the rest of our tenure. We have called this document a contract because that is what it is, a written account of what we owe the people and how we intend to meet our obligations within the shortest possible time. These documents represent our intention to be held accountable based on what we have freely committed to, to achieving, and which I am confident we will realize to the glory of God and the edification of our people. Our gathering here today is first to present this document to the public. More importantly, this gathering is intended as a convenient space for us to have frank conversations about how we will go about achieving the objectives we have set out in our contract with Nigerians. This is an opportunity to empower ourselves with the confidence to dare and the skills to deliver. I encourage all of us to use the time here today to learn from the speakers and each other, exchange ideas and develop individual roadmaps that will guide our interactions as we work together to deliver a House of Representatives that meets the highest expectations of its citizens. I look forward to what we will accomplish together in the months ahead.